Hey guys, how's it going? Ah, uh, got a few problems with uh, Valerie. I uh, drove it last weekend. I had uh, found a bad float in the carburetor, and I was she was running good. Took it out, driving the heck out of it, and and uh, loving it. And all of a sudden, I came home and I thought I saw an oil spot under the uh, engine there. I thought. The valve cover was leaking. Sure enough, I got down there and I saw this drip. And uh, I thought, well, that's making a mess. But I was in a hurry. I didn't have time to monkey with it. Didn't have room in the garage. So uh, next uh, thing I know, I go out there and that oil drip had evaporated. And that ain't right. Because if it was oily, it should have just been oily. And it should have collected dirt and made a mess. So I said to myself, self, that ain't oil. That's got to be gasoline. And it was coming out of the valve cover. So I got uh, either an issue with my fuel pump, which is mounted on top of the block. It's ruptured or something's going on with it and it's leaking into the crankcase. Or the float is uh, it's getting through the carburetor down into the intake mantle. Either way, very bad for the motor, uh, bad for the oil, bad for everything and got to get that figured out. So I took off the uh, fuel pump when I got home from work one night and uh, kind of held it up. Now, I forgot to mention just before I brought it home, I had filled it with fuel. So the gas tank was full and my driveway is a little bit of a slope. So it would have put gravity pressure back here, which isn't very much. And you'd think the float would stop that. And uh, I don't know, I took the, car, uh, the fuel pump off and you know watched it for a long time didn't see any drips set it on uh set it off to the side came home there was no fuel on the driveway or from that it's been getting dark early i didn't feel in the mood to mess with it so i took the top of the carburetor off i left it you know the base on but i took the carburetor off and the float was still floating i couldn't feel any gas in the float and the float level was not clear to the top of the carburetor. It looked like the valve was closing. So I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm gonna dig into it a little bit more today. A little kind of chilly outside. And uh, I didn't start it to get it in the garage. I was able to crank it up here in the, with the starting motor and move it off to the side. So now I'm gonna take the uh, fuel pump and carburetor off and try to rig something up where I can put a little pressure on it because uh, I don't know what else to do. So I'll keep you tuned on that as we move through this. And uh, of course, top of the list, I got to get that diluted oil out of the engine compartment and take address that. So uh, stay tuned here. All right, this might seem kind of hokey, but I wanted to show you what I've done to try to figure out what's going on with the fuel leaking into the crankcase. I removed the carburetor and the fuel pump. Now I did this during the week. I took the fuel pump and this is a, a new style fuel pump. I thought that they had a check valve that wouldn't pass the fuel through it. I thought it had to be pumped through it. I thought there was like a check valve going both ways i don't know why and there was fuel that was going all the way through the fuel pump while it was here um i looked down the carburetor and i thought i saw some fuel in there but i took the top off and it seemed like that might not be the issue so the way <laughs> the way i decided to to try it since rusty has an electric fuel pump with a regulator I took the other fuel pump and I just hooked it to the in and the out. Now, regardless of that issue about the check valve, I'm showing approximately, if this focuses, uh, we'll call it two and a half, under three pounds pressure, if that gauge is really accurate. I don't see any fuel coming out of this fuel pump. Okay, now I did 
a little bit ago. Probably won't do it for me now. Now, it's not like I emptied the gas tank into the fuel. I'm not sure if I can hold this right, but I was bringing it down here. Oh, I can see it right there. I don't know if you can. There's fuel that's dripping through there. Now, for crying out loud, at two and a half pounds, there should not be fuel leaking in past the float valve. So, the float valve, the float itself seemed to float, and I shook it, took it out and shook it. There was no fuel in it. It was buoyant, so, and the valve looked shiny and new, real new. I think I just put that one in out of a kit, but I'm gonna, I've got another kit, and I'm gonna put another valve in. And uh, I don't know, I'm starting to get real suspicious that whatever they're making these cheap kits out of uh, is not compatible with this ethanol and the fuel. And because of my altitude, they're putting a little more ethanol. Who knows what this says? This says 10%, but uh, I don't know. We may all be having issues who have carburetors if it starts eating up the plastics in the carburetors. Um, not whining, just saying, and I'm sure the aftermarket will address it and come out with something better for us. Uh, and I don't, that's fine with me, but anyhow, that's how I'm troubleshooting this. I feel the fuel pump is okay at this point. I feel the issue is in the carburetor, and uh, we'll take that apart and take another look. Hang on. All right, so what we're doing to solve the high pressure problem I don't uh, have enough factory gaskets and those are rather thin. I didn't want to grind off the top of the pipe. And uh, so what I did, I got some gasket material at the hardware store. I traced out one of the old gaskets. I want to emphasize this again that, you know, I'm kind of all about how do you fix the problem? You want it to be done right but by the same token, you know, the average guy should be able to do this stuff. Now I've got one, two, three. This is gonna be the fourth gasket. I tried putting three gaskets in there. And these are a lot, feel a lot thicker. I'm almost running out of bolt. Uh, I could maybe try a different fuel pump, but I bought this fuel pump new when I rebuilt the engine. Uh, says made in Brazil. I just can't, I gotta use what I got. And I've heard other people say, you know, our buddy Darren has said the same thing. Hey, this is what we got left to work with, you know, make it work. And this is how you do it. But most of these Volkswagen pumps, you don't have this issue with. I mean, there is, there must be something here that I'm overlooked, but when you get stuff that's this old and you're, uh, mixing parts and trying to trying to get something to run you got to do what you got to do hey John uh, marks I really like that idea that you had with the clip uh, put it under the nut and holding the side of the uh, this one doesn't even have uh, snap rings the shaft doesn't stick up far enough to have snap rings so hopefully that won't be an issue and I did pack that with grease before and we're gonna go ahead and up this fuel on. I'm still pushing over four pounds. I was about six. Maybe <laughs> I am gonna have to uh, grind off the end of that shaft. I'm running out of stud. Finally, I got it to. Uh, you look down there you can see I just I used extra gaskets but I ended up having to grind down the rod but you can see by the uh, fuel pressure gauge here I'm just under three which is what the book calls out it's not a perfect title by any means but it's uh, it's better than it was now Do not use this. 
this screw here, this throttle stop, that's, that's for your choke cam, fast idle cam. You do not use that to adjust your idle. You might have to in the beginning to get it dialed in. But what I do is, uh, ah, can't get it, okay. I'll get it so it just touches, just touches and maybe go about a quarter more, but you don't hear it change in the idle. Okay, now down below, you've got the large screw and you've got the small screw. The large screw is air, the small screw is fuel. You start at, I think the book calls out two and a half. Okay, do that. Going real slow. So you got your RPM down. Go back just a little bit, maybe maybe a quarter of a turn. Pretty sensitive. Now you got your big screw. This is your air screw, and you'll do the same thing. something off of what you got and experiment with it. Uh, I sure got bit on that. Anyhow, enough of this. Looks like we got another storm coming in. Supposed to uh, get crummy later on this weekend. So anyhow, thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Thanks for being you. Hang in there. Easy Jeezy out. I wonder how this will do at night. This is uh, this is our little, my favorite stopping spot there by the lake. I always like to do those mountain pans. Got some interesting cloud formations here. It was a full moon, looked like a full moon to me last night. I don't know if it was, but uh, that looks pretty cool. Interesting clouds. Definitely a storm coming in.